Welcome everyone. Welcome to Adobe InDesign Tuesday, Adobe InDesign Live. My name is Terry White. It's my pleasure to be here once again, streaming InDesign content just for you. So if you're watching this on the replay, if you're watching this on YouTube or somewhere else, welcome and hope you get something out of the tips. Um, whenever I'm in my office, home office, I'm doing these streams every Tuesday on the InDesign channel, same time, same channel, 1 p.m. Pacific at Facebook. Uh, dot com slash InDesign. So I take it that most of you are probably InDesign users and you're probably coming from all different levels of InDesign. So you are either, you know, beginner, intermediate, advanced, you know, old timer. You've been using it since day one. You just started using it yesterday. Whatever the case may be, I think you'll get something out of the tips today. Uh, so with that said, hello, Victoria. Hello, Patty. Hello, Igor. Hello, Christina. Uh, let's see who else did I miss. Hey, Thomas is in the house. What's up, Thomas? Hello, Lee. Hello, Dirk. So we got a full house here today. Everyone wants to know 10 tips or whatever the number, by the way, that's the secret. Whatever the number is, people want to know what they are. So that's always a, a attention grabber when you number things because people just want to know if they know all 10 or an all seven or all six. So I'm glad that worked and got many of you here. All right, Bri Brianna, hello as well. And let's go ahead and take a look at what the 10, tip, 10 tips are going to be. I'm going to switch over to my computer. And I'm actually going to give you 11. I'm going to give you a bonus one because this one kind of ties into the first tip. So you're going to get 11 by the end of this. Uh, the first one is actually going to get more like 12, 13. But anyway, the, the first one is it deals with how to... Um, uh, will this be... Okay, so... Alexandra is asking, will this be for the latest version of InDesign? Yes, but many of these tips work with previous versions as well. Um, matter of fact, most of them probably do. So the first one is a long-standing tip, but it just it became a little more complicated now that we have this new new document experience. Back in the old days, before you had this, hey, show me my recents, let me create from a template so forth and so on, when you opened up InDesign and you didn't have a document open, you would see InDesign. You would see your tool panel, your regular panels, so forth and so on. So first tip is if you want to get back to a similar experience of that, this is one, the bonus tip, by the way, uh, just go to your preferences, go to general or command K on Mac, control K on Windows, and simply say, don't show the Stark work workspace when no document is open. I'm going to turn that off temporarily. That is a tip, but that's not the main tip I want to show. I'm going to turn that off temporarily because with that off and I get my InDesign with no document open, that gets me to the first tip. And the first tip is you ever notice that whenever you start typing, whenever you create text for the first time, it is always in Minion Pro, regular, 12 point, so forth and so on. It's always in that font and you always have to change it or use a style sheet. Well, the first one is an old tip and it's basically... How to make your own default font or your own selection of your default font the default. In other words, I rarely use Minion Pro. I don't really care for Minion Pro. I'm not really a serif kind of guy. I like Myriad Pro to be my default uh, for most things. And of course, I could change it along the way, but I don't want to have to change it every single time I'm changing my fonts. Hang on for a sec here. Let me uh, put that on Do Not Disturb. Okay, so the first tip is with no document open, that's why we had to turn off the temporary workspace or the workspace, uh, I can now change this. So if I change this to Myriad Pro Regular, uh, whatever size, whatever other characteristics you want, that will be the new font default for every document I create from now on. It's not retroactive, meaning if you go back to an old document, Minion Pro or whatever will be the default still for that document. But if you create new documents after you make this change, every text frame you create will be in whatever font you just chose. Now, speaking of retroactive, here's another bonus tip. So this is like 1.1. Let's say I, I have a document I created yesterday and every time I create a new frame in that document, it's Minion Pro. If you make the font change with no frame selected, no text selected, then that becomes the default for that document. So even for your older documents, if you want to make the default change, just make the default change with no frame selected 
and then that will become the default. So now if I were to create a new document and I were to get the same experience that I always get and I were to now grow, go ahead and start creating text, lo and behold, it is Myriad Pro 12 point because that's my default. If I close this document, quit InDesign, come back tomorrow, every new document I create will be a Myriad Pro 12. All right, so hey, Michelle, hey, Jamie Fellman, hey, Elise, hey, Annette. All right, so let's go on to the next one. I'm going to turn the uh, workspace back on, the start, new start workspace. So I get this again. And now I'm going to give you um, another bonus tip. So this is not tip number two. This is still kind of that whole 1.1, one, 1.2, one, one or A, or pre-tip to one. Anyway, tip number one was the change your default font. The bonus to that was turn off your workspace first. The another, another bonus to that is every time I click create new or command in, I get this. And then I have to click and make my changes and I click create. You notice there's one called default. Well, what if I just want my default document? I don't want to have to see that second dialog box every single time. On the Mac, command option, PC, control, alt, in for new. Boom. You're in your new document without seeing that second dialog box, whether the workspace is on or not. You just want to quickly create your default document, command option in or PC control uh, alt in. And that will give you your new document without any muss, any fuss whatsoever. Now I know what you're thinking. How do I change it to what I want my new default to be? Maybe I always work, make Y documents to begin with. Maybe all mine are 11 by eight and a half. How do I change that? So this is tip 1.3 or wherever we are now. So that we still haven't gotten to tip number two. But along those same lines, if you were to go up to your file menu, come down to document presets and choose define, there is the one called default. If you go into edit and make whatever changes you want to be your default document, that's where it gets it from. So for example, I turned off my primary text frame. I set my default document to print. I turned off facing pages. I turned off all the things that I don't like to be my default. So that's how you set up where your default document's going to be or what it's going to be. All right, so now moving on to tip number two. So let's do our tip number one again, command option in, boom, we're in. All right, this one kind of blew my mind because it changed. It used to be a different keyboard shortcut, or actually it used to do a different thing when you did this keyboard shortcut, but now it is doing something new. So for example, you know that if you grab the frame tool or the shape tools and you drag out, you get one, great. You also know that, maybe you don't know, bonus tip, if you click, you can define the size. So if I say I want a three and a half by two for a business card, boom, there's my size. All right, so now let's say that I need multiple frames, but I don't wanna have to draw one by one. I don't have to copy paste. I don't wanna have to duplicate. I don't have to do any of that. So if I go, oh, sorry about that, I scrolled. If I go and start dragging a frame, a big frame for the whole margin area. But I don't let go, I'm still holding down the mouse. I use my other hand and up arrow key, up arrow key, right arrow key, up arrow key, boom. Create as many additional frames as you want by dividing the frame that you started with into whatever as many as you want. So up arrow key, makes them or makes horizontal frames. Right arrow key makes you know, your columns of frames. So if I needed three columns of frames, I would hit the right arrow key twice. So that one actually used to do something different. It used to be that if you were to drag out the polygon tool, and I don't know that we ever replaced this, this, um, this, um, hold on, sorry about that, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know if we ever replaced this with a different keyboard shortcut, at least I can't find it. So if someone knows it, That'd be great. All right, it used to be like if you drug out the polygon tool and you hit your up arrow key, it would add the number of sides to the polygon. So instead of whatever this is, six, I'd have seven or eight or whatever. And if I hit the down arrow key, it would do less. Now, of course, it just divides. <laughs> so I'm not sure uh, if we ever did replace that with something new, but at least that's the way it works now. 
Okay, so next up, that was number two, divide your frames or shapes as you create them. Um, the next one, ooh, I need to open up Illustrator for this one. Sorry, I forgot to have Illustrator already open. I'll look at your uh, comments while we're up there. It's a nice one, super. Has this started? Nope, Alice, it has not started. We're still in the pre-phase of this. No, I'm kidding, yes, we started. Uh, awesome, cool. All okay, right, so now let's go ahead and create a new document here. And I don't know if it's got the same keyboard shortcut or not. That would be nice. Doesn't matter what size, we'll just create a new document. Um, Illustrator is a way better drawing program than InDesign is. Yeah, InDesign can draw, you can make vector shapes, but Illustrator is just better at it. It's got better tools for making vectors. So for example, let me see if I can find something real quick to use. Let's use this, let's use this symbol. Yeah, let's scale it up. I don't know if this is going to be a good example or not. Uh, let's see if we can... I'm making this way harder than it needs to be. Uh, let's see if we can expand it. Yep, expand the object and fill. Sure, do that. So now basically I've, co I've converted it into just the vector shapes that we see. So a circle and a rounded corner rectangle. Now if I were to select those and copy and paste, not save it and then place it in design. If I copy and paste something from InDesign, and you know what, I just screw it. I need a better shape, sorry. This, this just won't cut it. I need something like this. All right, let's do this one. All right, let's scale it first. You'll understand why that one wouldn't work in just a second. Let's make this one bigger, cool. Now let's go ahead and get rid of that last little piece of the other one. Let's do the same thing. Let's go up to the object menu and expand it because it was a symbol. Yes, go ahead and do all of that. Now I can go ahead and manipulate the vectors themselves. And so for example, I can you know, pull that down and pull this down. I just want this to be open, cool. Now that I've got this shape, I'm gonna go ahead and select it and copy it. If you copy and paste vectors from uh, here, let's go ahead and add another page while we're at it. If you copy and paste vectors from Illustrator, like I'm about to do now, it becomes a frame. So now I should be able to, if I did that right, I should be able to click into it. Maybe not. Oh, because it's filled. Ah, hold on, hold on, one more thing. I just did it wrong. Hold on. Uh, this is actually the shape of it, so let me do this. Let's do that, and let's. I'm just going to cheat it real quick. Let's do something like that and something like that. And then we'll change the fill and stroke. Uh, we'll just reverse it. There we go. So you create your whatever, and actually I don't need that anymore. If I can get rid of it. You create your shape. The shape that would be easier to draw in Illustrator or better to draw in Illustrator or faster for you to draw in Illustrator. Copy it. Head back to InDesign. Get rid of this one. And yes, I know about libraries. Thank you. Thank you. And paste. There we go. And now we scale this down just so because we don't need that big. And now if I were to click in it with my type tool, you notice my type tool becomes a little circle. That's because it's now using this as a frame. So if I say type fill with placeholder text, boom, it fills that frame with text. So if you need a special shape frame that's hard for you to draw or hard for you to get done inside of InDesign, head over to Illustrator and either create it or trace it or use vector clip art or, or a stock, however you want to get your shape. Copy it, once you get your shape, paste it back in InDesign, it comes in InDesign as a frame. So it's like InDesign has no tie to the original, it doesn't know anything about the original anymore, this is now just a new object inside of InDesign, and it's still vector. So if you needed to go in and say, eh, I need the roof to be taller, then you could make the roof taller, you could still manipulate it after the fact. Okay, tip number four. And this one will be kind of cool because what I'll do is I'll use um, tip number two to work with it. So let's make a new page. 
And let's go back to the polygon frame tool and I'm going to draw out a big giant polygon, but I'm going to use the same tip that I used before. I'm going to hit the up arrow key a couple of times, the right arrow key a few times, something like that. And this could be any shape. I'm just using the polygons because I've got them. Now, of course, those are now individual frames. Okay, so I could delete one, delete that one, maybe that one. These are individual frames. But if I select them to, if I select them again, all is one. And this is tip number four. I can go up to the object menu in InDesign and I can go down to, if I remember where it is, I can go down to, nope, 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 do I, nope, I don't want to do any of that. There it is. Under paths, I can say make compound path. What that will now do is treat this as one giant frame of all those shapes. So if I can go to my file menu now and choose place, or I could even grab something from stock that I've got here in my library, file place or, or use one of your images from your library. Uh, let's say I just want to use something that'll stand out like these kids, drag the kids over and then place them in the frame and they now become part of that design. So without, because those don't have any borders, when I go to preview mode, we get to see them. And of course they are still live. So you can uh, click on them and move them around and maybe get them better in the faces the way you, or in the shapes the way you want. That would be kind of tricky. So you might have to move the shapes around. So all of this is still, oh, I made it worse. All of this is still live and you can still manipulate it. All right, so with that said, that was number four, make content, make compound frames. So basically, two or more frames of any different shapes, Command-8 or Control-8 on Windows or find it under the menu like I just did, and that will combine those frames that you have selected into one frame, and then you can use it any way you want. And yes, you can still go in even after the fact. I should be able to go in and even manipulate, directly manipulate the frames themselves. So if I needed that one to show more people, I needed that one to be a different shape and show more people that way, I can still manipulate them because the image is still there um, the entire time. Okay, next up, uh, number five. Number five is a simple one. It's one that bugs me though, <laughs> when people don't do it. Uh, let's say you make a giant frame because you think you're going to type something major. So you go in, you start typing, this is cool. I wish I had known these tips yesterday. I'm just kidding. But anyway, so you did that and now your frame is too big because you didn't fill it. You did. And here we can even make the type a little bigger. Um, you didn't fill it. You didn't use up the whole frame. So of course, if you're practicing good document hygiene, you would go in and resize it, make sure that it's no bigger than it needs to be. So that way it's not overlapping anything or causing unnecessary stress. Let's undo that because there's a button right on your control panel that does it for you. The fit content to frame works with type frames as well or text frames. So you don't have to, um, would this be in YouTube and what would it be called? Would what be in YouTube and what would it be called? But anyway, we're going to say fit this uh, fit frame to content. And when we click, it just automatically does that. So you don't have to grab it and resize it and get it just right. So when frames are too big, just fit the, con fit the frame to the content. And it'll automatically shrink the frame. Works for images too. All right, number seven. No. Number six, use text as a frame. So uh, let's grab another page. And let's say that you type a word like, uh, let's grab a type tool. And let's, by the way, I'm going to use the page tool. I'm going to show you a bonus tip. Let's go to the page tool, which is right there. And with the page tool, I'm going to switch this page to landscape. Yes, pages in your InDesign document don't all have to be the same orientation or size or any of that. So I just switched that page to landscape. 
because it'll just work better for what I'm going to do. All right, so this page, we're going to type the word spring. I know it's coming eventually. Spring will be here someday, maybe by the time summer starts. All right, but anyway, we get this nice and big. By the way, a bonus tip, I'm holding down Command Shift, um, Command Shift greater than to make that bigger. All right, next up, we're going to go in and choose a font. I'm going to make one that's nice and thick. And the one I know that's nice and thick is Fat Frank. Fat Frank Heavy is nice and thick. And what I want to do is I want to use the word spring as my frame. So I just go up to my type menu, come down to create outlines. That will make it no longer text, but it also makes it so that it's no longer text. It's actually a frame. So if I were to grab an image like this and drag it into that, it becomes my image. And I can even use my fitting commands on that to fit that down better. I can also use the content grabber to move it around inside the word spring. Now, by the way, bonus tip, patient user mode, something a, a phrase I coined years ago. If you just grab the content grabber or anything in InDesign, it's gonna just give you a box. It's just gonna give you an outline. You're not gonna see what you're doing until you let go. All that, then you're just gonna to have to keep clicking until you get it in the right spot. Or if you hold down your mouse and count to two, one, two, you see a preview. Now you can know exactly where it's going to be when you move it. Patient user mode brought to you first by Terry White. All right. Um, how'd you adjust the page format? After I created the page, like so, I grabbed the page tool, which is a tool on the tool panel. And then I just went up to the control panel and changed it to whatever I wanted, including a different size, different orientation, whatever you want. All right, so next up, let's talk about, that was number six, use text as a frame. Number seven, use the story editor. We can go back up for this one. Let's say that your frame is too small for your text, and you don't know if you've got a single line overset, or two lines of overset, or three lines of overset. You don't know how many lines you've got because what people tend to do is they tend to make the frame bigger. And, oh, nope, still not enough. And they keep making the frame bigger and you know, and maybe that works, but this could, this means that it worked that time, but maybe it won't work next time and so forth and so on. So the story editor is a, a little mini text editor built into InDesign. And the way you get to it is you just simply click any, your cursor anywhere in the text and hit Command Y. There's a menu option for it. It's under Edit, I believe. It is called Edit in Story Editor. So Command Y on Mac, Control or PC Control Y, and that will edit the text in the Story Editor. And it gives you this nice red line, letting you know this is what's overset. This is how much more stuff is not showing. So you could either make the text smaller, make the frame bigger, edit the text down. Whatever it takes so you see all your text. So if you are the author and you say, hey, I don't need this middle paragraph, it's redundant, then you can reduce the middle paragraph and you have now uh, almost solved the problem. I thought I was done. All right, let's do one more. And maybe you say, hey, I don't need these lines either because you're the author. But if not, you'd have to do something else. If you're not the author and you can't change what it says, then you make the text smaller or the frame bigger or continue the text to another frame. All right, um, here's another one. Let me grab the, let me select this word so I can copy it. There we go. And uh, while we're here, we're just going to go ahead and, ooh, I can use this frame for it. Okay, so I wish I had known about these tips yesterday. Sometimes this can be paste inappropriate and we don't want that. Okay. So let me go ahead and, and make the frame bigger so I can see the rest. Which, by the way, that same tip I showed you earlier also does it for the frame in the opposite direction. If you need to make the frame show what's there, you can fit frame content and it will make the frame big enough to show you all of the text that's missing. Okay, next up. Um, people are asking for an encore on spring. Okay. Uh, we'll do it at the end. So, 
The problem here is the word inappropriate, which I pasted in because I always spell it wrong. I always miss too many P's or too many N's or whatever. But anyway, I, I got it, I pasted it in and notice that it hyphenated. Well, I could turn off hyphenation for the paragraph, and that means nothing will be hyphenated. Or I could say, you know what? I just never want the word inappropriate hyphenated. I never want the name of my company hyphenated. I never want certain things hyphenated. So what we can do is, I'll put my cursor there so we'll see it happen. Um, I'm going to go up to the edit menu, come down to the um, spelling, and user dictionary. This is your dictionary. This is the words that you want to add. So I got the word inappropriate highlighted, or at least it's there, it knows it. And if I put a tilde character, the tilde is the one above the tab key. So shift tilde. If you add a word with a tilde in front of it, it not only adds that word to the dictionary, which is already in dictionary, but I don't need to add it again, but it adds it so that it will never be hyphenated. So when I add that word, look, it already did it. It says, oh, inappropriate, can't be hyphenated. That's a rule now because I added it to the dictionary with the tilde. So if you want to ever have a word, branding, company, whatever, never be hyphenated, add it to your user dictionary with the tilde key in front of it. That's what the tilde looks like above the tab key. And that way it will never get hyphenated ever again. Okay, so next up, um, number nine. So we're gonna go back to, where are those extra frames? We're gonna go here. Ooh, there's not enough space in between them, so I'm gonna fake it. I'll start pulling these up a bit. I need some more space in between them. That's why I'm doing this. Oh, you know what? It's just easier to do it this way. Let's just get rid of these. Get rid of these. There we go. And we'll just duplicate these down. Oh, before we even do that, let me get rid of this one. So here's a bonus tip. I want these all to have the same setting. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to fitting, frame fitting options, and set my frame fitting option to fill content proportionally. Fill, fit, no. Fit content to the frame. Fit content proportionally. Fill the frame proportionally. I'm sorry, that's the one I want. I had a brain freeze there for a second. Okay, so now I'm going to duplicate that across, holding down my Option key and dragging it. Then I'm going to select both of them, hold down my Option or Alt key and drag it down. I need some more space in between them. And boom, we'll just do that. That's enough. Okay, so now that I've got multiple frames, two or more, the next thing, um, dang, I learned something new. Tilda. Yeah, you learned something new. How about that? Cool. Um, why is it dang? That should be like, hooray. <laughs> dang is usually when you don't want to learn something. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, and I'm doing this from memory. It's been a while since I've done this, so bear with me if I screw it up. I'm going to grab the text text frame. And I'm going to create a text frame for that, and I want to... Um, do a couple of things in that text frame. I want to go up to my type menu. I think it's under type. Type, 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 type. Maybe not. Let's see. Should be under type or edit. It's under one of these. And you can't help me because you don't know what I want to do. I want to go under type. And now I know why Photoshop has a search for Photoshop. Okay, so you're looking for something you don't remember where it is. Uh, I want, I want, is it under edit? No, 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 it should be under, should be under, yeah, oh, it's under object. I would have never guessed, clearly. All right, so under object, uh, there's something called caption setup. When you do caption setup, you can say, basically, this is a two-step process. It's saying what I want my caption to be. If I want any text before it or after it, so and where you want it, I want it below the image. I uh, oh, you know what? I didn't have to draw. I don't think I have to draw a frame for that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I don't think I need this frame. Like I said, I'm doing this from memory. All right. So under the object menu, go to captions, caption setup. There we go. And I want the caption to pull the description. From the image. So I have to find the word description, not in alphabetical, not in alphabetical order in design team. Why not? All right, give me uh, the word description. 
Um, use whatever paragraph style you want, put it below the image, offset it by that much, click OK and nothing's going to happen because you just set up what you want your captions to be. Now I can select all these frames and I can say under the same object menu, under captions, generate live caption. And it says nothing's there because there's no images in those frames. If I were to go find some images, let's go get um, my demo files here and let's go to my photos and let's go to my landscape photos and I were to grab a few of these like these six and I were to drag them into InDesign and then I were to say bam 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 and bam I got captions it automatically pulled the description from the metadata of the images automatically so notice the first one says a beautiful sunrise in spain because that's what it is if i were to go back out and find a different image like uh, this one from hayman island and drag it in and then hold down my option key or alt key to replace that one now it's a view from our room in hayman island so it's pulling the description and it's live from the image. How are you getting the captions in the images? How are you getting those descriptions in there? I use Lightroom, but you can use Bridge or any other tool that makes metadata. So for example, if we were to drag this folder onto Bridge, wherever Bridge is, I don't use it, but there it is. There's Bridge. Uh, and you were to select that image. If you were to scroll down and find description, which it's under the, oh, it's here somewhere. It's at the top here. There it is. Uh, no, that's the description writer. If we keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. I can never find it. It's got to be not in the ITPC core. It should be in this one. It should be in this one right here. Why don't I see description? It's here, I'm just scrolling feverishly and scrolling past it. So let's find it real quick. All right, slow down. It's not in the file properties. It should be here, but it's not. I do have the one image selected, good. This is why I don't use bridge. <laughs> Somewhere in here, there's the word description you should, oh, there it is. Okay, so there's headlines, sunrise in Spain, and a beautiful sunrise in Spain, and that is under the category of IT, IPTC core. So that's where you'll find, I just kept scrolling past it. So that's where you'll find headline and description, and of course you can pull any of those in. And thank you, Antoinette says I passed it. All right, so there it is. Um, and of course you just select the image and apply whatever description or headlines or whatever else you want. And again, I do that in Lightroom under title and caption. So it's the same thing. All right, next. Um, that was number nine. Number 10. I'm going to create a new document for this one because it's kind of cool. Many of you um, probably don't know this, but the, here, by the way, this is just a multi-page template. Uh, of course, it has nothing filled in. But um, anytime you have a multiple page InDesign document, and this one's horizontal. So imagine if you used InDesign to make your slide presentation and you wanted to deliver it in InDesign or you wanted to show a customer a brief of the work you created. And they're right there in front of you. So you could just go down here to where you normally switch between normal and preview mode and bleed and slug. At the very bottom is presentation mode. So let me make sure I'm not in your way. Yep, not in your way. Presentation mode at the very bottom. When you do that, Boom, puts everything in presentation mode. You go to the next page by hitting the right arrow key or the left arrow key uh, to go back, just like you would in a slide presentation. No, you don't get animations and uh, cross dissolves or any of the stuff you would get from Keynote or PowerPoint, but you do get the issue uh, or you do get the ability to, I'm reading someone's comment, you do get the ability to have a quick presentation of your InDesign document by going to presentation mode. How do you get out of presentation mode? You don't, you just have to 
shut down. No, I'm just kidding. You get out of presentation mode by hitting the escape key. That will take you right back to where you are. So, um, hope you got something out of this. And so we'll do the spring encore for the people that needed that. So here's what I did. So I'll go a little slower this time and then we'll be done. So let's, let's do another one. Let's grab our type tool. Basically all I did was create my frame. I typed my word into it. So this time we'll do summer. I chose a nice, thick, heavy font so that the image will show through nicely. So I chose uh, Fat Frank Heavy, which is a type kit font. You guys can all have that. And I made my word bigger by command shift greater than. And once I did that, now of course that's just type. So at this point, proofread it, make sure it's the right font size or just the right font and right text. Because once you do this next step, you can't edit the text anymore. So what I did was I went up to my object menu I'm sorry, my type menu, and I said create outlines, command shift O. That converts the word summer into a graphic. So now if I were to grab an image, place, drag and drop, anything you want. If I were to grab an image of, let's say, the girl with the long hair, and I or lady with the long hair, and I were to click and place, it places that into the word summer. Now, this is all vector. So if I were to go in and say, hey, I want to reshape uh, reshape my letter M. I can reshape the heck out of my letter M now because it's vector. I can redesign this to do whatever I want to do. So it's just as if you had drawn the word summer in Illustrator and copy and pasted it and it became a frame. So I hope, hope that was slow enough. If not... You can watch the replay and go and pause it and go step by step. So with that said, I hope you got something out of my 10 tips. Uh, quick recap, change your default font, divide frames as you create them, create frames in Illustrator, copy and paste them in. Number four, make compound frames, making multiple frames into one frame. Number uh, six, use text as a frame, which is what we just did. Uh, number seven, using the story editor to edit text that you can't see. Number eight, uh, never hyphenate this word, whatever the word is. Uh, generate image captions automatically based on the description in the image. That's a killer tip. You got to admit that. Number 10, presentation mode to present your work. So with that said, everyone, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for hanging out a little bit extra for the encore. And uh I appreciate all of you watching this and giving it a thumbs up on Facebook and sharing it and all of those cool things. All right. All the way from Frankfurt. You're welcome. And cheers, everybody. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. I know you can still hear me because I'm still trying to close the stream. This is your conscience talking. Use InDesign as much as you can. Go forth now and spread your knowledge. All right. I'm, I'm going to get there in a second. Refreshing. Let's end the stream now. Anytime it's ready. I know, because I'm still talking. All right. People are saying, I can still hear you. Hang on. Here we go. In live video. Finally, I have the button. Yay. Bye, everybody.